Bernie Sanders is in. He is running for president. He joins a growing list. Who knows how big this list is going to be by when all is said and done. Those are the declared, the exploratory, essentially in, possibles over there. If you look at the Real Clear Politics average at the top five right now, and again, this is way early, but these are early polls. You see Joe Biden still leading the pack, Sanders in second, Kamala Harris, Elizabeth Warren, Beto O'Rourke, who's not in yet either. Let's bring in our panel, Byron York, chief political correspondent of the Washington Examiner, Mara Eliason, national political correspondent of National Public Radio, and Matthew Nettie, editor in chief of the Washington Free Beacon. Okay, Mara, the question is Is the party going to absorb, like they did in 2016, the enthusiasm now that there are other younger acolytes who are essentially saying the same thing? I mean, has kind of Bernie been a victim of his own success? Exactly. Yes. Why do you need a cranky old guy from Brooklyn when you can get these young, exciting people who agree with him on almost everything? So I think that there is something to be said for Bernie missed his moment, but he did shape the party and I think he certainly can be proud of that and he was remarkably modest where he said he didn't want to say that the party moved his way, but most people would. I think he's right. Now not everyone wants Medicare for all right away. His bill absolutely gets rid of private insurance in one fell swoop. A lot of people want a Medicare buy-in, but the point is that a lot of his ideas are being accepted widely and I think the party does really want someone young and fresh. Here's Senator Sanders and the president today. Bottom line for me is I think uh, it is absolutely imperative that Donald Trump uh, be defeated because I think it is unacceptable and un-American, to be frank with you, that we have a president who is a pathological liar. First of all, I think he missed his time, but I like Bernie because he's the, he is one person that, you know, on trade, he sort of would agree on trade, but I wish Bernie well. Uh, it'll be interesting to see how he does. It is going to be interesting to see how he does. Uh, for the progressive side of this group, uh, it is another big figure who's coming into this race. Well, he was the big sensation of the Democratic race in 2016, but it is hard to recreate that. And part of the reason he was a sensation was because no big-name Democrat would challenge Hillary Clinton. Do you remember the first Democratic debate? It was Bernie and Clinton and Jim Webb and Lincoln Chafee. I mean, <laughs> that was it. It was a very, very poor field. And progressive Democrats at the time did want somebody to talk about free college and about infrastructure and universal health care and all that stuff and Mara's right they have a bunch of people uh, who are ready to talk about it now and on the age issue Bernie will be 79 years old on election day that is older than Ronald Reagan was when he left office after eight years that is really really pushing the limit the same as Joe Biden though right it's I mean, a little younger but not a little much younger, a little right? little younger 76 I think, um, right? Isn't it, it's fascinating to see how this race is going to develop because you have the possibility of Joe Biden getting in. You have Amy Klobuchar trying to play, I think, the practical Democrat, touching both sides of the party. Uh, and then you have Howard Schultz out there probably applauding Bernie Sanders getting in this race. Right, and reminding Democrats in a Medium post this week that I'm not here to spoil the race. I'm here to present a viable alternative if the Democrats go far left. You know, I think what's interesting, Brett, is Biden's reluctance to announce has created this vacuum on what you might call the business-friendly side of the Democratic Party. And so all the energy is now in that weather system that Bernie Sanders stirred up in 2016. He's drawing all the energy to the left, and you have you know, poor Amy Klobuchar there saying, you know what, we can't all have free college. I wish I was a genie, but we can't afford it. And she needs reinforcements. Otherwise, this will not be Barack Obama's party. It won't be Hillary Clinton's party. It will be Bernie Sanders' party, and that helps Donald Trump. Here is Kamala Harris uh, being asked about Democratic Socialist. I am not a democratic socialist. Um, I believe that um, what what voters do want is they want to know that whoever is going to lead um, understands that in America today, not everyone has an equal opportunity to a, an access to a path to success. And as Matthew mentioned, Amy Klobuchar last night. Yes or no? Would you support no. free college for all? I am not for free four-year college for all. I wish if I was a, a magic genie and could give that to everyone and we could afford it, I would. 
I mean, it seems like there's this aspiration, and then there's the realism, and we're gonna. This battle is gonna be happening all throughout. She said, "I am not for free four-year college yeah. for all." The definition of a right winger in the Democratic Party is <laughs> you're for free two-year college or for all, free, which she was, uh, but is not for four years. So I, I do think, in terms of inspiring voters and and getting people's attention, when you start talking, saying things like, "Well, that's just not practical. We can't afford that kind of thing." That is not going to set the Democratic party on foot. Let me except, ask you a question except, a different way. Go yeah, ahead. Oh, except Democrats want to beat Donald Trump. And this is a party that's in a pragmatic frame of mind. They're going to figure out who has the best chance. Since they're all pretty much similar ideologically, I think people are going to be voting with their heads as well as their hearts this year. But in that case, isn't Bernie Sanders, in one case, an existential threat to that possibility of beating so. Donald Trump. Yep. I haven't been I acting so. very pragmatically, and it's very funny for Kamala Harris to say she's not a democratic socialist. She's been acting like one. I mean, what was her comment about eliminating private insurance? She's for Medicare for all. She's she for the that. Green New Deal. She's going to be regretting a lot because <laughs> she is slowly laying the predicate for Donald Trump to frame the 2020 election as a referendum, not on him, but on socialism. And that's a referendum he can win. All of the media now asking this question, can you feel the burn? A burning question, you might say, with Bernie Sanders. It's absolutely nobody's surprise getting into the 2020 race yesterday. And uh, many journalists grappling with a whole number of uh, question marks about his candidacy. But the number one uh, question is this. Can he recreate the sort of magic that he had in 2016? There's a whole bunch of reasons why the answer is probably no. And here's one of them. In 2016, you know, this guy who was an independent, uh, senator, kind of a gadfly, kind of a carmudgeon, not even a Democrat, caught fire against Hillary Clinton uh, because all the people, all the Democrats who didn't like Hillary for whatever reason, they didn't like her personality, the email mess, uh, she was part of the Clinton machine, she was part of the establishment, they were more liberal uh, than the former first lady, they all went to Bernie. Uh, now, Bernie uh, was able to turn that into a fundraising machine from small donors, that'll be a big asset now that he is running again. But he won't have the same situation because now, even on this, in this progressive lane, he's running against Kamala Harris and Cory Booker and Elizabeth Warren and others who will have a very similar message, though Kamala Harris uh, distanced herself the other day by saying, well, she's not a democratic socialist, unlike Bernie Sanders. Also, the reason that, that Sanders ultimately got clobbered in 2016 was that he couldn't make many inroads in the black vote, which is crucial in any uh, Democratic primary. I mean, South Carolina last time, it was, according to exit polls, Hillary, 86 percent, Bernie, 14 percent. He recognizes that. His staff recognizes that. Now, you have to give him credit because earlier than almost anybody was able to recognize, he sensed that there was more of a sort of a hunger on the liberal side for the kind of Medicare for all, free college tuition, uh, break up the big bangs kind of message than was conventional wisdom here in Washington, and that resonated, and the party really has moved. He can say, hey, I started this revolution, that's part of what he said in his opening video, uh, and now the party's kind of caught up with me. But now they've got a lot of choices other than somebody who's 77 years old and not even a Democrat. But here's the final reason why I think Sanders is going to have a tougher time. And who knows, you know, with, so, with such a multi-candidate field, he's got the name recognition and he could have the money. And it is this. Bernie Sanders never really got much journalistic scrutiny in 2016 because the media never thought he was a serious threat to win the nomination. They, they loved the fact that he was in the race, that he was winning some of the primaries, that he was giving Hillary fits, because it extended the primary season. It was very entertaining. You know, he'd give a speech, he'd scream the speeches, talking like a guy from Brooklyn. Um, but they never really took him that seriously. They did the math. They knew ultimately he wouldn't win. And because of that, there wasn't really the sort of full-fledged, uh, journalistic examination of his policy positions, how much would they cost, what's his foreign policy, of his record in Congress, uh, what did he accomplish uh, in the decades that he's been here. Uh, this time around, if Bernie Sanders gets some traction, that won't be the case. This time around, if he is seen as somebody who actually could win the nomination, he'll get the full media inspection. And we'll have to see how he does against that. I mean, he got something of a free ride last time. Uh, for the very reason that he was the anti-Hillary candidate, but not a candidate who ultimately was going to be uh, going up against the Republican nominee in the fall. So look, he'll add, uh, he may even help some of the more liberal other Democratic candidates because he will make them look more moderate compared to his very left-wing uh, socialist type approach to the job. 
So the more the merrier. Uh, I'll enjoy watching Bernie in action. But the, those who think he's going to come in, and just because he's number two in the polls to Joe Biden now, it's basically name recognition. Those who think he's going to come in and be the same formidable force in the Democratic Party as he was three years ago, they may have another thing coming. Good evening. Welcome to Washington. I'm Brett Baer. Bernie Sanders is giving it another try. The 77-year-old self-described Democratic Socialist will run for president again as a Democrat in 2020. Sanders says since his failed attempt in 2016, many of his ideas have become part of the political mainstream. And he's promising an army of devoted grassroots followers will continue his crusade. The question is, does the party want him to be the standard bearer, or does it just gravitate to his ideas? Correspondent Peter Ducey is in Manchester, New Hampshire tonight. It's below freezing in Burlington, but Democratic primary hopefuls are feeling the burn. You're going to run for president. I am going to run for president. That's correct. And with that, Bernie Sanders started stitching back together a coalition that won him 13 million primary votes in 2016. Since it only took four hours for 42,000 donors to send him $1.2 million. Brothers and sisters, we have a lot of work in front of us. Sanders says he sees an opening because almost all of the top tier Democratic presidential hopefuls are pushing things like Medicare for all, which he did last time. All of those ideas, people say, oh, Bernie, they're so radical. Well, you know what's happened in over three years? All of those ideas and many more are now part of the political mainstream. The Trump campaign thinks that's good for Trump. A spokeswoman says Bernie Sanders has already won the debate in the Democrat primary because every candidate is embracing his brand of socialism. But one contender is careful not to get too close to Sanders. I am not a Democratic socialist. And another doesn't think everything Sanders supports, like tuition-free college, is realistic. I wish if I was a, a magic genie and could give that to everyone and we could afford it, I would. President Trump welcomed Sanders to the race today. I think he missed his time. But I like Bernie. But the feeling isn't mutual. I think he is a pathological liar every day. Uh, he is telling one lie or another. And that's a more direct approach than others are taking with Trump. But if we as Democrats especially make it about him and not about us, I make it about one office and not the cause of our country, we're making a very big mistake. One of the president's loudest critics still has yet to announce Joe Biden, who spoke in Philadelphia today. I don't begrudge anybody making a million or hundreds of millions of dollars. But I do think there's some shared responsibility and it's not being shared fairly. New DNC rules require that everybody who wants to run as a Democrat has to be a Democrat. And Sanders is an independent, but in New Hampshire, that shouldn't matter. We in New Hampshire consider him a Democrat. He's been very supportive of our candidates and our party for decades. Uh, so, you know, he can call himself what he wants. So the 77-year-old Democratic Socialist thinks the second time is a charm. What's going to be different this time? We're going to win. Even during the last campaign, President Trump sympathized with Sanders, saying he thought it was unfair that Democrats helped Hillary Clinton get the nomination. But while saying that, the president called him Crazy Bernie, one of the few Trump nicknames that might be grandfathered in to the 2020 race. Brett? Peter Ducey in New Hampshire tonight. Peter, thanks.